Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic uh, reaction rates and reversible reaction. So basically today we are just going to focus on the applications of uh, equilibrium that's the Le Chatelier's principle. So we will see where this principle applies in industrial processes and you will see how that application occurs and then you do a question. So Industrial application of the chemical equilibrium. So the ability to change the position of an equilibrium will vary, uh, will be varying. The conditions has been important in the industrial process as the, the industrialist aimed at obtaining a maximum product at minimum cost and the shortest time possible. So conditions required to obtain greatest yield of product at minimum cost and shortest time uh, possible are usually referred to as the optimum conditions. Such optimum conditions are obtained by continuous removal of products, hence reduction in the concentration on or varying external factors like temperature and pressure. So for example, one of the common industrial processes is ABA process. This is the manufacture of ammonia by the reaction of nitrogen and hydrogen. The reaction is exothermic in nature. So removing ammonia gas once formed shifts the equilibrium forward. So if you keep on removing uh, the ammonia, remember the concentration of ammonia decreases and you said the equilibrium shifts to replace the excess, uh, the ammonia that has been, is being uh, removed. So more or higher yield of ammonia is attained. So increasing the in pressure shifts the equilibrium forward to the right and there is less volume where there is less volume and molecules. Remember we discussed on the factor of pressure, how it affects the equilibrium. And you can see when you look at the number of molecules in the reactant, they are four. The number actually is supposed to be, yeah, they are four. And then uh, the product, the molecules are two. So you can see on the reactant, there are more molecules on the products, there are less molecules. So as increasing the pressure, the equilibrium is supposed to be shifted to the right because more of the ones with less molecules is going to be produced, where like, um, yeah, the one that has less molecules will be produced. So higher temperatures favors this uh, reaction. So more uh, ammonia is going to be attained. So very high pressures raises the cost of production because they're expensive to produce and to maintain. And remember we said for optimum conditions, we want conditions where it's less costly, but produces uh, substances uh, with a maximum yield. So because the high pressures are very costly, so an optimum pressure is uh, allowed, which is around 500 atmospheres. And then still in the same process, also we talked about temperature, one of the factors also that affects equilibrium. So remember this reaction is exothermic, it's releasing a lot of heat into the environment. So if we had more heat into the environment, it means that we are putting excess heat. It needs to continue getting rid of that heat. So this reaction actually is favored by uh, reducing the temperature. Reducing temperature will cause the equilibrium to shift to the right because now it needs to produce the product to increase the temperature to replace the one that is being reduced. So increase in temperature shifts the equilibrium backwards to the left because the reaction is exothermic. So ammonia formed decomposes back to nitrogen and hydrogen to remove excess heat, therefore a less yield, just like we said, this reaction is not favored by increase in temperature. So very low temperature decreases the collision frequency of nitrogen and hydrogen, thus the rate of reaction is too slow. Yes, it might be favored by low temperatures, but the low temperatures also causes the reaction to be very slow. So it is not that economical. So they, they accept an optimum temperature around 450 degrees Celsius, which helps in production of more ammonia. And then we also talked about catalysts, although catalysts do not have an effect on the equilibrium, but it helps the reaction to reach equilibrium faster. It doesn't affect the equilibrium such that it doesn't affect the forward or the backward reaction, but it helps those reactions to reach equilibrium faster. So iron and platinum can be used as catalysts. Platinum is a better because it's uh, 
it's not that nice because it's uh it's more expensive and easily poisoned uh than iron and then iron is promoted or uh, impregnated with iron uh, three oxide uh, to increase surface area of contact to the reactants thus high efficient just like i've said catalyst does not increase the yield of ammonia but it usually speeds up the rate of reaction so another industrial process is a contact process it's also an exothermic reaction as you can see the amount of molecules in the reactant are more than in the product as well so we know that if we remove sulfur six oxide uh formed the equilibrium is going to shift the forward meaning we are removing more of the product so it means, it means that the system will work so that more of that product is being produced so the equilibrium sh uh, shifts to the to right meaning more of sulfur for six oxide is produced and then increasing pressure also you can see if we increase the pressure uh the equilibrium will shift to the direction where there is less molecules and the place where there is less molecules is where the sulfur 6 oxide is being produced. So increase in pressure shifts the equilibrium forward to the right and less, where there is less volume or less molecules. So more of sulfur 6 oxide is produced. But you know very high pr uh, pressures also are not that, uh, they are not that cheap. So they are very costly, so that's the reason why they settle for optimum temperature uh, pressures of one to two atmospheres. It usually removes a yield of like ninety six percent. So when it comes to temperatures, remember we said this is an exothermic reaction. An exothermic reaction is not favored by increase in temperature, so it is, it is favored by reducing the temperature so that the system can work to increase that temperature. So increase in temperature shifts the equilibrium backwards or to the left, so less of sulfur six oxide is produced. But if you lower the temperatures, it helps in the production of more of sulfur six because the system works at to take back the temperatures that were there beginning. But we said also low temperatures are not that favorable in such that they will cause the collision frequency to be slower. So the rate of reaction is slower. So it's not that economical. So they settled for an optimum temperature of around 450 degrees Celsius. And the catalyst in this case that is used is vanadium 5 oxide because we said initially also platinum is usually a little bit expensive and it can be poisoned easily. But vanadium 5 oxide is cheap. So let's look at this question that will enable us to see if we have understood what we have learned. So we talked about ABBA process and also talked about contact process. And we looked at the different factors that affect those equilibrium. That is, we looked at the concentration, changing concentration in both reactants and products, temperature and pressure for both reactions. And you noted most of the things in both reactions are the same because they are exothermic reactions. And you notice also the number of molecules in the reactants are equal to the number of molecules in, are not equal. They are more than the, the number of molecules in the product. So let's look at this uh, reaction, the hydrogen G required for this synthesis is formed from methane and steam in a reversible reaction. The equation for the reaction is shown below. You can see this reaction is an endothermic reaction, the forward reaction. So sit and explain what happens to the yield of hydrogen in this reaction when the temperature is increased. So as I've said, if you look at the forward reaction is endothermic, the back reaction is exothermic, uh, as, as in vice versa. So increase in temperature always favors the endothermic side. Why? This is because if you increase temperature into the system, the equilibrium will work such to get rid of that excess uh, temperature or excess heat that has been placed into the system. So it means the endothermic process is going to be favored. So the forward reaction is favored. So there is more, so we are going to say more of carbon monoxide and hydrogen is produced. And the reason why this is so is because increase in the temperature
shift the equilibrium to the right since the forward reaction is endothermic. Can go ahead and say the system shifts to get rid of the excess heat introduced in the system. So that's it. So this is just a sample question. The equilibrium questions are very common. So you can go back and check the factors, look at each factor, especially when it comes to pressure. Uh, that is one of the factors and temperatures that students are not able to relate well with, but it's not that hard to remember. Remember always the Latatlias principle that whatever change that is made into the equilibrium reaction, the equilibrium will shift to counteract that change. So if you increase something, reduce something, add something, the equilibrium will always uh, shift so that it needs to get rid of that something, that change that has been done. So that brings us to the end of rate of reactions. Uh, so see you in the next lesson.